Hi Taurus, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you are doing well. This is for any sun, moon, or rising Taurus sign. We'll take a look at the cards for the awareness or big ideas for the week, guidance and possible outcomes. I will also choose a few oracle cards for additional information. So without further ado, let's just get started with your reading. Okay, big idea for the week, new cycles, new beginnings, opportunities for you. You've reached a point where maybe you've been considering something that really speaks to you, something that you feel is important within your life that you want to take hold of, that you want to start a new path or new journey. It could be a small thing or it could be something more significant within your life. But it's going to cause you to step out of your box and out of the routine. When we look at the Fool, this major arcana card, we're looking at taking a leap of faith. And it's a leap of faith that makes us access our passions, our desires, the things that will make us feel carefree, have fun, to bring excitement, to bring adventure back into our life, so while the little dog is either barking in excitement, like take me along, or saying look out, it's really up to you. It's up to you to have the vision of what it is that you're going to set off and do, and to do it, to take the leap of faith. And again, a leap of faith is a lot different than a reckless action or choice. You are aware of the consequences you know that you need to bring into your life some, something different, something that will make you feel this childlike wonder. It's all about what life is, is to feel the fun, to feel the joy of living. So something new, a new path, a new cycle for you. Other big ideas for the week include an idea of gentleness, of kindness, of consideration. In this illustration, we see a child handing the little child a cup with a flower. Such an innocent illustration, and it goes to the authentic feelings of being kind and considerate and thoughtful without expectation, without thinking of what you want in return for this gesture. So it's simply being thoughtful when you can be thoughtful, being kind when you, you can be kind. The other idea with the Six of Cups is a sense of nostalgia, of revisiting past memories or reconnecting with people from your past. An ex, maybe a dear friend, gets in touch. Um, again, you're, you're somewhere and that vision pops in your mind, something maybe of a parent who's passed, and it puts a smile on your face because often we can find comfort within our memories and, you know, we can um, restore our, our own, little, a little bit of our own humanity. When we take a walk down memory lane, you know, the real danger is don't live down memory lane. Don't always pine for the past. You need to be in the present in, and appreciate the past. Allow yourself to feel the warmth of that moment as a recollection but don't let it derail you from building a future or from living in the present. So, you know, you may just simply be hooking up with someone for lunch, meeting someone for lunch, that's what I meant to say. Um, <laughs> and someone that you used to work with, it could be something as simple as that. Okay. So we have the Seven of Swords, 
and Seven of Swords, we have Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and this dude, he is making off with the swords from the camp, looking over his shoulder like, I'm going to get away with this. It could be very possibly someone trying to take something from you. Whether that's your time, whether that's a material object, this is a card where you need to be very aware of the people in your surroundings and in your environment and in your interactions. You have to weigh where they're coming from. You have to listen to your instinct as well. And so there are people who take advantage of others. There are people who prey on gullible people. There are others who are very simply out to make a dollar or out to get a name for themselves and you know, we'll do whatever it takes. So some people say a sneaky bastard, all kind of um, names to describe this, but it's really the possibility of deception of someone not re representing themselves honestly to you, a hidden agenda. So you need to be mindful. You need to make sure that words and actions are in alignment and that people say something that they need to uphold it and if they're not then you know there's no harm in questioning but be on the lookout be mindful be aware that not everyone acts with integrity and then another piece of guidance for you is is maintaining your balance is to seems like you are having to handle activities and a lot of things going on in your life and it feels like it's never ending right the infinity it just never ends you can never quite get ahead and isn't that true of life and and regardless if it's rough waters in the background or not you have decisions to make you have priorities to make you have uh, you have to work it out what works best for you to find the balance within your life and not to drop those pentacles. So this week, in terms of guidance, perhaps you need to pay attention to your finances or your resources, including your time or time spent. That um, it requires you maybe to prioritize and to focus or to key in on certain things. Often when we see these pentacles, it's rela in, in relationship to your finances to your budget to your spending habits work 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 seven of pentacles this guy is taking a break from work and he's probably thinking about who that's i put a lot into this i put a lot of my time and my energy into working this and handling and nurturing this pentacle bush. And so again, being busy, being active, trying to find the balance. He's taking a time out. He's either reflecting on his work. He may be thinking, when is this thing ever going to be done? Or I really don't like this anymore and I want to move on. So a couple scenarios, but as I would say with the seven of pentacles, you're so close to completion. You're so close to the end. Hang in there. Often when we're working in a project, we do take a step back. Number one, to catch our breath. Number two, to assess how we're doing. Are we being efficient? Can we improve the process? Is there, do I need input from someone else to help me get back on track? So a moment to take a break, fine. If you, if you never get back to it, you may not get paid. You may not get your resources taken care of. So there's a matter here of taking the break you need, but getting back honestly into the game. And it, there's a sense here that you do. Because with the Eight of Pentacles, there's a uh, real focus here on what you're actually doing. Some of you may be working with your hands. Some of you may be very dedicated to your jobs where you put in a lot of hours, where you are careful with details. Ultimately, you're very proud of your work, displaying your work. 
you're not distracted by what's going on in town where you say, oh, I'll, I'm going to go in for a drink or two and then I'll get back to work. This is very focused, hard work. Some may think tedious, some may say grunt, others may find comfort or um, pride in the routine, in the structure that's with this Eight of Pentacles. For some of you, this could mean that you have training or that you're taking training, that you're uh, increasing your abilities either through reading a book, taking a webinar, online class, um, working on a certification, taking exams, but working hard. And you may be working hard on your new journey. I think a key message here is to really think about the balance that you have as you are working, as you may be trying new things, you know, people who start a business for themselves or for those people who start their own restaurant, you know, it's a huge amount of work, incredible sacrifice and work. So uh, if your dream is something like that, this may be saying that be prepared that you're going to be working really hard. So now let's choose a card for focus area or meditation point for the week. Narrow pathway, tread thoughtfully. And we tread thoughtfully because if we're, if we're not paying attention, we may fall off the narrow pathway into the abyss. <laughs> so it's a message here to think about the steps that you take. Think about how you're proceeding. If you're taking this leap of faith, thinking about here you want to bring back this carefree feeling, but think about how you're doing it. So now let's see what's going on for you in terms of spirit or emotional self. Inspire passion. Life devoid of passion can be a boring, uninspired, blank canvas that slowly drains the soul. Now is a time to reignite your passions and to rejoin life. This is an opportunity to set up new goals, which will in turn reconnect you with all that is sacred. And it is, it's about the passion for life. It's the zest for life. Living your purpose, doing the things that make you feel free and happy. And finally, let's choose a card for love and see what the messages are for love. Embrace your emotions. Don't push down your feelings or judge your emotions. So honor your emotions, allow them to be expressed, find ways. And if it's not easy for you to do, perhaps there's a small thing, a small gesture, a note, maybe a nonverbal, uh, you know, something nonverbal for someone that you care about. So, you know, when, when we allow our emotions to be present and when we're thinking about how we're feeling, I think that's a really important, like a GPS towards, uh, you know, our mental state of health as well. It's to not to shove your emotions down below and not deal with them. This is what I have for you for your reading for the week. I hope that you found something helpful here today. And if you did, please subscribe, like, share, or comment. I wish you a great week and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.